Today on the newscast, Iran's crown prince, son of the late Shah, makes an historic visit to Israel. Plus, Iran's current president vows to destroy Tel Aviv and Haifa. Get all the breaking details next. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman newscast. Iran's current regime has now been in power for 44 years. It's hard to believe, but that 1979 Iranian revolution that brought the Ayatollah Khomeini out of exile and into power was 44 years ago. And in the ensuing decades, the Iranian people have been the main victims of this tyrannical regime which has really deployed a reign of terror, not only inside Iran against its own citizens, but across the region, of course, and across the world. 44 years, that's a long time, and sometimes it can be easy to remember that before this current radical Islamic regime in Tehran, there was a different government. It was led by the Shah Mohammed Pahlavi. He was obviously deposed in 1979 in the midst of this Iranian revolution. He died in exile here in the United States. His son, Reza Pahlavi, lives in Maryland, just outside of Washington, D.C. He is the crown prince of Iran. He was the heir to his father. Uh, he would have succeeded the Shah as the leader of Iran if, obviously, the revolution had not happened. Now, the Shah's government was not exactly a beacon of democracy and human rights, needless to say, but it was an ally of the United States, it was an ally of Israel and the West, and it was anything but a radical Islamic regime. It was a secular government. Now, Reza Plavi, again, I mentioned, lives in Maryland. He is very active in the pro-democracy movement in Iran, working with uh, pro-democracy activists there against the regime. He's a very interesting individual, and he is in Israel right now. Folks, this is an historic visit. We're going to break down the larger ramifications of it, number one. And number two, comments by the current president of Iran, Ibrahim Raisi, also known as the Butcher of Tehran, and for good reason. What is he saying about two of Israel's three largest cities, Tel Aviv and Haifa? We'll break that down in a minute. Before I do, two very quick notes. Number one, if you have not subscribed to the Watchman News channel right here on YouTube, hey, give us a subscribe, click the notification bell so you get alerts every time a new video is posted. You may watch us every day, but haven't subscribed yet, folks. It is completely free, so just click the subscribe button and you will get alerts every time our videos are posted. You don't want to miss anything that we are putting out in these perilous times, these Bible times in which we are living, including my brand new TBN special, What is the Great Reset? Now, it aired on TBN last night, but it is now available on our YouTube channel. Just go to our homepage here, go under Newscast, or you can go under U.S. News as well, both of those categories and you will find it, What is the Great Reset, a hard-hitting special where we lift the lid off this sinister agenda by a, a group of global elites. There's no other way really to put it. The World Economic Forum, the UN, people like Bill Gates, all on board with this agenda, which would involve a cashless society, digital currency, a digital ID to move freely, and the end game a one world government. You may say, oh man, that sounds consp conspiratorial. Hey, it's not a conspiracy. If the people behind it, which include some very powerful players, as you'll see, are saying it out loud. So be sure to check out what is the Great Reset here on our channel. We're already, we're already getting a, a great deal of interest in this special. I think you'll want to watch it for such a time as this. Speaking of these momentous times, perilous times, but Bible times, and God is on the throne. Speaking of these times, Reza Pahlavi in Israel. Now, people may say, well, you know, he's not really a player. If the Iranian regime were to fall, he wouldn't be the man to step into the void and become Iran's leader. There are varying opinions on this. There are different strains of Iranian opposition throughout the world, in particular based 
in the States and in Europe. So there are varying opinions about uh, Reza Pahlavi and his, the prospects of him eventually coming to power in Iran if and when this regime falls. Okay, we get that. But when someone whose title still is Crown Prince of Iran, he was the son and, and the heir uh, to the last Iranian ruler before the current regime. When someone like that pays a visit to Israel, it is very noteworthy. He arrived yesterday with his wife and a pretty fascinating whirlwind trip, folks. Number one, Reza Pahlavi is very happy to be in Israel. He tweeted, quoting from the book of Ezra, quoting from the Bible, and talking about King Cyrus, obviously the Persian king who allowed the Jewish people to return to the land of Israel and rebuild the temple. Hey, remember, ancient Persia was modern-day Iran. Folks, Iran is a Bible land, whether it's Esther and Mordecai, Cyrus, Darius, Iran, which was called Persia in Bible times, is a Bible land. Reza Pahlavi seems to certainly recognize this. He talked about the ancient friendship between uh, Israel and Persia under King Cyrus and how he would like to revive that. We've seen the Abraham Accords. He said he would love to see the Cyrus Accords, which, that's what he called it, with Iran and Israel coming together in peace. That's not going to happen clearly under the current Iranian regime, but you have to love to hear those aspirations at least. And Pahlavi also spent time at a ceremony last night, an annual ceremony that I have attended. Uh, it's the Holocaust Remembrance Ceremony at Yad Vashem, Israel's Holocaust Museum. He met with Prime Minister Netanyahu and others. He prayed at the Western Wall. Again, when you think of Iran today, folks, what do you think of? Sadly, because the Iranian people, I, I just love the Iranian people, a wonderful people. It's home to the fastest growing church in the world, by the way, in spite of relentless persecution. So God is moving there despite all the evil amongst this regime. And really, the current Iranian regime is also the world's main purveyor of anti-Semitism and anti-Israel sentiment today. So to see an Iranian like Reza Pahlavi, the son of Iran's former leader, no less, visit Israel, attend a Holocaust remembrance ceremony, and pray at the Western Wall, all while quoting the Bible, folks, that's a big deal. So we're keeping a very close eye on this. Again, I don't know if Reza Pahlavi really has a chance to one day lead Iran. Who knows? But he is a player in all of this and in opposing the Iranian regime. So he's someone to bear watching, especially as he forges closer ties with Israel. Speaking of Iran's current leadership and Holocaust Remembrance Day, today, April 18th, is indeed Israel's Holocaust Remembrance Day, where everything stops for two minutes this morning. It happened already. Everything stopped for two minutes. Israelis get out of their cars. They stop what they're doing, folks. I've been there on the street during this Holocaust remembrance period, everything stops for two minutes. Sirens blare for two minutes to commemorate every Jew killed in the Holocaust, six million. So it is a stirring day, and those two minutes, there's nothing like it. It's busy rush hour in the morning in Jerusalem. Every car stops, everyone stops. Complete silence for two minutes as those sirens blare. There, there's nothing like it. But this day, on this solemn day for the people of Israel, on this day, the current president of Iran, the butcher of Tehran, Ibrahim Raisi, gives a speech. And this is also Iran's annual army day. And as Raisi spoke, fighter jets were flying overhead, Iranian submarines were in the waters, tanks, soldiers, flexing Iran's military might. And Raisi, again, this is the president of a country, folks, threatening to destroy another country, another sovereign nation. Here's what he said, and it's not the first time. Any little action, and I quote, taken by the Zionist entity, that's what he calls Israel, against Iran will be met with a fierce response by Iran's army and will lead to the destruction of Tel Aviv and Haifa. He also warned U.S. troops to leave the region. 
So a very interesting speech by Ibrahim Raisi, and that is an understatement, but folks, a few things here. Number one, the latter part, in terms of warning the U.S. to leave the region, about a month ago, we had this Iranian drone strike against a U.S. base in Syria. One U.S. citizen, a contractor killed, six U.S. soldiers wounded. So clearly, Iran is trying to make that U.S. evacuation from the region a reality. We've seen at least 78 attacks carried out by Iran and its proxies against U.S. bases in Iraq and Syria since Joe Biden took office. So that's number one. Number two, threatening to destroy Tel Aviv and Haifa, two of Israel's three largest cities. Sad to say, folks, this is not a surprise. But put this in perspective. As I mentioned a minute ago, this is the leader, the elected, quote-unquote, Raisi, if you think Iran's elections are free and fair, nonetheless, hand-selected by the true power in that country, Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Khamenei. But Raisi is the president. In many ways, he is the face of the regime to the world. He's meeting with European diplomats. He's at the UN, etc. He's openly calling for the destruction of two cities, the two, two cities of another sovereign nation. Now, you would think that right away you'd have a long list of condemnations from the UN, the European Union, the Biden administration. Right away, this is unacceptable. We can't have this. But crickets are chirping, folks. There's been no response that I've seen yet, and I pray I'm coming to you around noon Eastern time on Tuesday, April 18th. I pray that by close of business, at least, that we will have some forceful statements uh, from the U.S., Europe, the U.N., pushing back against this genocidal rhetoric by Ibrahim Raisi. Folks, I'm not holding my breath. Let's get serious. And at the end of the day, these statements are largely symbolic. But if they were forceful enough, the Iranian regime would listen. But if there are statements at all, recent history shows they likely won't be forceful. And the MO for the West and the international community is clearly to appease the Iranian regime as it drives towards a nuclear bomb and threatens the destruction not only of Israel, but of the United States. But again, noteworthy that the leader, I'd say the second most powerful man in Iran, besides the supreme leader, is calling for the destruction of two of Israel's largest cities. Call me crazy. I think that's worth reporting. I think it's worth responding to the world, especially the so-called free world here in the West. I think it's worth us responding to. This is a time where Israel's friends could really step up and stand beside the world's one and only Jewish state, particularly on Holocaust Remembrance Day. And in particular, when Iran and its allies right now, folks, as we've detailed for you here in the newscast, are salivating at the thought of Israel being internally divided. They see the internal discord, the protest inside Israel, and they are growing bolder. I'm talking about Israel's enemies. We saw the rocket barrages about two weeks ago out of Gaza, Syria, and Lebanon. Folks, Iran is planning something larger along with its proxies. We know this. Israel's prepared, but it will not be pretty, and we will continue to keep this in prayer a very perilous time in Israel right now as the enemies are at the gates and in some cases in the form of terrorists in Judea and Samaria inside the gates. So we're keeping a very close eye on all of these breaking developments in the world's most strategic and chaotic region and we will continue to report for you how they affect you no matter where you live in these prophetic times that we live right now. Speaking of Bible prophecy, the Middle East, everything going on in the world right now, the Great Reset. Again, reminder, check it out. One last programming note before we go. Tomorrow, Wednesday, April 19th, we will have another Watchman Newscast live stream right here on the channel between 4 and 5 p.m. Eastern Time. So join us live and bring your questions for our Q&A session. We've got a lot to discuss live. It's going to be good. I will see you there. Until then, thanks so much for joining us today. God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss an upload. And tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. And don't forget to share your thoughts, insights, and comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.